Hello and welcome to Ben the Knee, a Song of Ice and Fire podcast. I am Sir Ezra, the Watchful, and I am joined by Lady Charlotte of Tinworth. How are you? I am good, but tired. No, I'm great. <laughs> she's good, but she's tired, but she's here. We're here. We're exhausted, <laughs> and uh, but we're ready to go. We're ready to fight. We're fired up. We want to talk about House yeah. of the Dragon. You're wondering, who is this? Who is this Lady Charlotte? Well, welcome my wife, friends, okay? <laughs> uh, this is kind of a, this is a fun little episode. We are so, we're kind of running behind a little bit, uh, just in terms of like, Matt and I did a quick 10 mm-hmm. minute episode, that as some crazy. of you heard. That was crazy. Um, that was wild. He is in Hawaii. We tried yesterday to talk and it was, uh, it was, it was, I don't know. It's far away. Hawaii is far away. <laughs> Uh, the internet was was not working for us, and also I'm in a new spot too right now, so the internet was a little bit touchy for me. Uh, but it is what it is. Can we start with some news real quick, though? Oh yeah, absolutely. Some some breaking news. Um, Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. Ah, uh, you're a big. I mean, you like the royal family, don't, I don't do. you? Kind of follow. I do. You've met the queen. I kind of not. You couldn't say met. You were on first name. Basis. I was. I was. <laughs> Yeah, right. You had tea with her. No, I was at um, Windsor Castle mm-hmm. when I was traveling through England. And uh, that day happened to be a day when the queen was there. I see. So she was just in the courtyard and people were, we were just, you can, part of the castle you can walk through. And then um, people started running to the windows and I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> and everyone was like, it's the queen. The queen is outside. Elizabeth. Yeah. Elizabeth. Yeah, and I saw her. I took a picture with my phone, and you have to zoom in really, but, really hard to see her. But oh, okay. She was just, just, you know, little old lady. Just yeah, old. was she doing the little, like, the little... No, she was just walking. In. Oh, she she, just she wasn't walking. waving at anyone. She was just there for oh. business or... Wow. That ended up not being as cool as I thought it was going to be. No, I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I'm but teasing. I kind of saw her from with my own eyes, you know, right. like, through a window. Yeah. So that was cool. Yeah, that was cool. That's cool. I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I heard about that today, and you know, first of all, um, sad, right? I mean, it's yeah. just because she was the like what the longest ruling monarch. Oh yeah, but at the same time, I mean, ninety six. I mean. Yeah. Oh yeah. She, she lived had a, a long, life, good life. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. So I know they're God's country in mourning. So we just wanted to kind of um, mention that it just happened. It just happened uh, yeah. today. We we're at school. All of my students were like walking by. Uh, some of them were. Talk, they were talking about the queen. They're looking up the queen. How long did she like? You know, it's one of those things where all of my student the buzz yeah. was all about her and, and her legacy and everything. I thought, wow, that's really interesting. And then you know, we have um, you know our big talk about the Targaryen yeah. dynasty and stuff. So. Uh, yeah, totally. I thought about that. Yeah. yeah, because we talked about earlier. We talked about okay, who's next in line? Who could be next in line if so and so steps away and yeah. does not want to be king? Uh-huh. Like, how does that work? And it's still, it's still. That yeah. system is still there, kind of. So it's yeah, yeah. I mean, it's crazy how she got there. Like, like you know, what was it? Her brother, uh, Queen Elizabeth's brother, that abdicated? No, no, no. Someone, but her uncle or something, okay. right? Uh, somewhere, bu- uh, like along the way, someone abdicated. Again, I'm not, uh, I'm not there yet in my history books yet. So I gotta, gotta <laughs> get through. All that. Uh, it, or the Queen of East. What's it? What's the show? There's a Netflix show about her. <gasps> really? What was that? The oh, Crown. Oh, gotta watch it. Oh, the, the cr- Crown. That was about her. I think so. I started watching the first episode and then I started watching. So <laughs> yeah. I started watching the crown first episode and Bridgerton, Bridgerton, the first episode. <laughs> and I had to choose which one I wanted to continue. Which way well, to guess, go. Gu- guess what? <laughs> I ended up Bridgerton. watching Bridgerton. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. The, the crown is a historical drama television series on the reign of Queen Elizabeth II. Oh, okay. um, and I believe um, yeah, Matt Smith, who plays Damon Targaryen? I think was in that. I think oh. he was in the cast. Again, yeah, cool. Matt Smith. Yeah, right there. So he he's he, the a guy. So Damon, you know, the Rogue Prince was was in that. It just kind of fitting. Thought I'd I'd mention it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt's better at these things. He he kind of knows you know actors and stuff like that. I I lose track of them real quick. So I I apologize if I got that wrong. But I think he's in it. Um, yeah, just wild, right? So you know, she was the longest reigning monarch yeah. in. Right before Viserys, who you who so Lottie has never read the mm-hmm. books. Right, she only watches the show. She watched Game of Thrones. Oh yeah, all and of then it. we've been getting into this, and she's always so she's my watch partner. Right, we we <laughs> we, we we watch it. 
Uh, we react to it. She's sort of like, wow. And then I get on here. I talk with Matt. And uh, we, we break it all down. So, yeah, she has lots of questions, and we're going to kind of go through those. But before, mm-hmm. you know, Viserys, when right before him is Jaehaerys. And he's, like, okay. called the old king. The old king because he reigned um, for so long. And so okay. it makes me kind of think yeah. of, you know, Elizabeth. And, like, mm-hmm. there was peace under his reign and his rule. Uh, and, and that's something Viserys is trying to live up to, wanting to have that time of peace. And also being, you know, looking out for... Uh, essentially the darkness that is to come, you know, in the Song of Ice and Fire series. Yeah. That's like the big new thing, which is that you're looking f- looking out for the White Walkers. Yeah. That you have to be prepared and everything. So I don't know. Just uh, kind of wild. It's it's an interesting uh, connection today. And again, uh, yeah, our hearts go out to that country. It's going to be weird. Yeah. You know, I, the things that we're talking about today were like they have to like rename everything oh yeah uh it's, it's all everything's based around the queen yeah and then so now it's like god save the king yeah uh, about, right so i mean almost a century it's been the queen right i'm not really um yeah she I was mean, in off when did she 21 she was 21 or something she was or 20, 21 when oh. she yeah was was uh yeah. crowned yeah so and that's cool because it was the first one that we got to see you know what I mean? It was the yeah. first one that everyone, you can actually watch it and stuff. True. So. Yeah. That was a big deal with the cameras. The first time they had cameras there. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. And then we are kind of watching again. We'll, we'll probably get to see another royal uh, mm-hmm. coronation in yeah. House of the Dragon. Yeah. <laughs> and in real life, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so anyways, let's, let's dive into this. And I uh, just want to give you guys a little hello there. Welcome. Uh, get the mics rolling on this. But uh, Sir Matt will be back just in news. We're going to be back for episode four, and we will be kind of chatting about um, the upcoming episode, episode four. So, we'll Oh, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited, too. It's, it's coming be... out Sunday, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, coming mm-hmm. out Sunday. Yeah. So uh, we'll be back. I think he's going to call in. I think he'll still be in Hawaii, and so we'll kind of uh, – cover that so and before we get going too far also if you guys are interested by the way while i have um lady charlotte here uh we do run a podcast it's called shell cottage radio Mm -hmm. it is our little (laughs) harry potter podcast i know you're like yeah i'm mentioning it and i'm glad that uh that you're on this episode because it's just fun you've been doing such a good job (laughs) over there and uh, you guys here know that i run a lot of different podcasts with different friends and it's so much fun. Yeah, and it we, is our fun little family project, and yeah. um, we love talking about Harry Potter too. So I mean, we sometimes slip into different conversations. It's really more Wait. of a <laughs> what are we watching and what's going on. I feel like our cottage catch up session is more just about like, we, I mean, I, yeah. re- I reference House, of, I mean, Rings of Power, House of the Dragon, Star Wars references make it on there all the so time. Yeah, it's crazy. It's just sort of who we are. And, and if you're wanna, just a big you know, nerd like us. I think yeah. you're going to like it, yeah. Yeah, I think you would like <laughs> it, too. It's a lot of fun. Good ambience over there. So go check it out. Shell Cottage Radio. Uh, you'll find it. I'll put a link down for it in the description, but a lot of fun. So uh, thank you to Charlotte for helping us, for joining in here. Let's dive into this, though. What have been your initial thoughts on... So we're going to talk about this episode, mm-hmm. but I just mean in general, watching the first three episodes. Like, how are you feeling? Are you shocked? Mm-hmm. Is it exciting? Are you liking it? Do you think it's good? You know, oh yeah. yeah oh yeah i do okay. i yeah. really enjoy watching i can't wait for the next episode um i you know it took took me a little bit to get into game of thrones just because i'm i guess i'm a little you know what what would you call it a wimp <laughs> i just I, yeah. I just when i watch tv shows that are you know for adults i, I just don't care for like scenes that are pretty brutal, brutal to yeah. watch yeah yeah even though i know it's just you know acting and it's good acting and it's good costumes yes. and yeah. you know fake blood and all that stuff but for some reason i just have a hard time watching someone really like i don't know you know like ha- hitting someone in the head for uh, you know those scenes well, are for or me the just scene, well we started this episode at episode three where right right the, the <laughs> crab feeder is like i just somebody. look away so that's my yeah. thing I can watch that show because it's so entertaining, but when scenes like that come up, I just look away and it's like, oh, hopefully I'm not missing anything, but I just wait until that scene kind of is over. So (laughs) that's why it took me a little bit to get into Game of Thrones, but once I was hooked, I was hooked. I mean, like the the story and the shock, this is the first time we have so many characters you know that oh. we thought we were going to have until the end and they were yeah. really important if you haven't read the books um right, right very shocking things but i think this show it is totally like game of thrones feeling but 
mm. totally different too. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I almost like a better. Do you really? Yes. <laughs> so if I know it's wow. only three episodes so far. Right, right. But I, I love the characters. I love the, you can already see, okay, so many things are going to, you know, get intriguing and people yeah, are going to, yeah. there's so much potential for the characters to have, to develop in different directions. And even if yeah. you read the books, you don't really know where it's going, right? Right. Well, that's something, that's something Matt and I talk a lot about, which mm-hmm. is the, there's an outline and yet things are already a little different. There's yeah. the, the biggest drop on all of us was that there's this uh, secret that is passed down yeah. from, from the, from the air, right? From the, or to the air, yeah. right? Uh, so Rhaenyra gets that secret and Viserys has to pass it on. It's very mm-hmm. important to kind of secure your line, uh, figure out who that is. And and that actually, when you think back to like the old king, just real quick to get kind of a, a you know nerdy for folks. Yeah. When you think back to the old king and the council of 101 uh, AC, where they chose Viserys, you see there's this queen Rhaenys, like the queen yeah. who never was. The, the, right. She's uh, married to Corlys Valerion. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was up there too. And, and it was like, could it have been her or, or is it going to be... Um, Viserys and it ends up being Viserys but like the reason and all these names sound really close but (laughs) the reason King Jaehaerys uh, before him like he needed to pass that secret on Mm -hmm. he needs to while he's alive have an heir so he can mm-hmm. have that conversation or yeah. leave a note or something. So, <laughs> leave a note. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> hey, we, we and, and that might be one of the things too. You've got to look at like, okay, mm. if the secret's going to be, it's passed down to Rhaenyra, uh, it, then, okay, it's up to her to pass it on to the next person or mm-hmm. whatever. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's sort of, you got to be, the secret's important to preserve. Yeah. So it's preservation is at the start of all of this and it's mm-hmm. something we're going to kind of follow or whatever. But but you're right, though. There there are things in the books. Um, or I'm sorry. There are things in the show that are not necessarily in the books. Right. And I think that's really cool. And we're learning new and different things. People were looking for this character, kind of a court gesture. Um, Mushroom is his name. OK. And, and he typically will tell you kind of like this is what, you know, dirty rumors about what was happening yeah. and who's sleeping with who and what's going on. Oh, uh, like that. Th- there were two guys um, in Game of Thrones. Uh, yeah, like like the Viserys. One, the, the, the... Varys. That, that was yes. Varys. Yeah. yeah. Varys and then um, Littlefinger. Yeah, Littlefinger. Yeah. 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 So a little bit like they're he was less. They're more storytellers. And so right, right. now they haven't. I mean, he hasn't made an appearance. And as far as I know, mm-hmm. um, unless he's just in the background somewhere. But. Yeah, so th- some things are changing and some things are, are different. We're, get, we're getting um, where there was a void in the series, it's being filled. Like things, for, mm-hmm. for example, that first uh, episode when Viserys was sort of in on the decision, right, to, to like, does he save, who does he save? Does he try to save his, his, his child, uh, his wife? Oh, it was such goodness. a hard, I know, it's such a hard scene. And I don't even like to bring it up, yeah. but it was just, it was, that's one of those things we didn't know how much input he had on yeah. that. Uh, as a book reader and then so you're watching in the show you're like wow this is amazing so mm-hmm. and then now i guess for a show only watcher which is what you are yeah. right um you have no idea right which way this goes right mm-hmm. you don't know who like who to trust or who's right i mean so what who i guess would be your your kind of your favorite character like who do you like most right oh now? yeah um i love i love every like Rhaenyra. i Rhaenyra? know she yeah. is like the main character yeah and yes. but I love seeing her acting. I'm, I'm totally like sucked into her story arc, yeah. and she reminds me so much of Daenerys. And she's supposed yeah. to like, um, yes. like you said, uh, she probably studied her a little bit to to mm-hmm. to be someone different, but at the same time remind you of her. Yeah, and it's yeah. probably the other way around since she's older. So Daenerys right, probably but... reminds you of Rhaenyra. Yeah. Um, but the connection to the dragons, the you know, like she she wants something different some she as a woman she's destined to be just you know just i'm I'm not saying just but yeah, like yeah to be a wife and a mother she's that's what everyone wants of her to marry and to have children right. and she's like right but i i want to do something else i'm you know i'm i don't just identify through that yeah yeah and, yeah right which is cool i mean i think you you like you saying that uh, I, I bet that the actress and again both of them because we're gonna have an older version of her uh, soon who like they are trying to channel mm-hmm. what does it mean to be a Targaryen what does that look like well mm-hmm. 
you know, Danny is the Targaryen that we know. Yeah. So I feel like even all of them have to kind of, what is it like to be yeah. a part of this family and to carry yourself like a Targaryen? Well, yeah. she is, right, she and her brother Viserys for a short time in, in season one are your Targaryens that we yeah. see. And so it's just really interesting to, to, yeah, I guess from an acting perspective and then just storytelling, you know, look at the text that George R. R. Martin has, but then at the same time sort of draw from Amelia Clark's performance, yeah. which is was awesome and she's Khaleesi we love her yeah Uh, so yeah um can I add something though Uh, it's not just her I also surprising so um her father I think every time I see him I feel like yeah his struggle is real he doesn't he is a father he loves his daughter yeah he loved his wife his first wife absolutely yes and that was traumatic like this and he still has all these duties, like like he said, after his wife's death, like de- a day or two after, everyone asked him about, oh, you got to remarry, like you got to, you know, you have duties as a king, and there's right, no right. time to mourn the death of his wife. And now he's in this impossible situation that he made um, his daughter, his heir, mm-hmm. which is new and right is controversial definitely controversial right first time that happens and he produced a son with his daughter's best friend like <laughs> i mean it's crazy isn't it when you say it out loud wild it, it is it is wild yeah <laughs> um but actually that's not what i wanted to say i actually wanted to talk about damon 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 damon, damon. Targaryen. yes i like his character i know this is probably crazy because he is he has a definitely a, an evil brutal side yeah yeah but so there's something about him like that especially in that last episode i was like shocked right yeah. i was shocked that he was ready he was ready to die and i was mm-hmm. um i love that they have these little five to ten minutes at the end where the producers talk about the episode oh yeah that's so yes. interesting when they they share yeah. their what they you know like their vision of the episode and why they did certain things and why characters did certain things and um they were like yeah he was he was basically he should have died so many times on that battlefield Mm -hmm. yeah he should have and and then the grand entrance of the dragons who saved the day right i mean that's the targaryen it's the age where all the dragons are still alive and yeah that's power. the power. Yeah, they have the power because of the dragons. Right, right. And so the only way the crab feeder is surviving in this is by hiding in those caves yeah. and stuff. At the, so he comes in strong. Yeah. And you're like, okay. And you're not exactly sure when that is. You know, uh, we see just this, that he's there. When we go back to King's Landing, we realize, okay, it's been three years, right? So we've got young Aegon, Aegon the second. Uh, so Allison is also pregnant and stuff like that. So that's <laughs> yeah. just, to, just to kind of set up again and a reminder as to where we're at in episode yeah. three. Um, that's exactly how this whole thing starts. And it's just, it's interesting. So for you, um, Rhaenyra is one of your favorite characters mm-hmm. and then Damon. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I wish I could tell you more. I wish I could tell you what's going to happen. <laughs> I can't, I'm not going to do that. Cause I want, I want, I want to really see what, what you think and what you think, uh just just how much you enjoy this and by the way someone mentioned to sir matt and i like hey you know i was listening but you guys started to kind of get into spoilers a little bit Mm -hmm. uh you know book spoilers so i think we're really going to try to be cautious with that and just talk about what we've seen because lots of people just watch the show as well lots of people just watch Mm -hmm. it yes so we'll do once we go full spoiler i i I think i'll say like obviously we're talking full episode spoiler Mm -hmm. but when we talk about book spoiler i'm going to be much more conscious of that in the future i think in episode two we got a little I probably got a little carried away, which I do yeah. sometimes just in terms of talking about, oh my gosh, like that's going to matter. Seeing something now and saying, I think I know how that matters and mm-hmm. where that's going with the story is fun for me. It's just, yeah, it's really I bet. So I think people who have read uh, Fire and Blood would like that as well, but it mm-hmm. just kind of needs to do some, you know, something that we do maybe in the extended edition that Sir Matt yeah. and I do yeah. uh, for folks. But uh, for now, it's when we mention Easter eggs or dragon eggs, it's going <laughs> to be stuff that just ties into the history or that's... Mm-hmm a cool tie into a song of ice and fire yeah there's a lot of things that are happening in this episode that tie into um later on yeah what did you what do you think about the episode yeah so i loved it uh matt and i were losing our minds so (laughs) that just in terms of like what this was and Mm -hmm. and and what it represented it did so much i i didn't think i would like king viserys as much as i do i mean he's really just when, when you read about him he's very 
there's a few paragraphs. Okay. It's not a whole lot. I mean, there's there's enough there. You know, you, you it's really more of how he deals with his brother. It's, okay. It's, yeah. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's him dealing with Damon, the mm-hmm. Rogue Prince. Uh, Damon being upset that he wasn't named heir, but also always supporting mm-hmm. his brother, looking out for him, etc. Being, you know, proud that like they're next up sort of. I mean, because yeah. it could have gone a completely different way. Yeah. Like when his brother uh, was chosen before he was chosen, Damon like marshaled like an army. The forces was mm-hmm. like, I know, ready to go. And he's, that's like, why I think his character is so interesting. Yeah. He support. He actually did support his brother. He mm-hmm. was. It wasn't like completely. I, I hate everybody and I just want to be king i just want right. to destroy he was no he has more to there's more to his character and his yeah personality yeah, yeah. And, and i see people online saying things like i don't know like they're like i don't know why it's also matt smith's a great actor mm. and i think they said someone said in this he only has a few lines in the very beginning like one or two lines mm-hmm. where he's asked he's yelling at the crab feeder telling him to come out where are you and stuff like yeah. that but other than that he doesn't say a thing mm-hmm. which is pretty cool it's just a very silent uh a, a, just a lot of acting in terms of his body language, what he's doing, action sequences and stuff like that. Right. So he does a great job. Uh, but, yeah, he's, he's he's a really dynamic character. And I don't know. It's uh, He's he's back and forth. He's one of those characters that George R. R. Martin likes to write in terms of uh, he's real. He has side, yeah. they have this sides of him that are, I don't know, lustful, sides of him that are, like, maybe more honorable, more kind of like I also want to prove myself as a second son. Yeah. And... Just really interesting, really interesting. I mean, loyalty to family too, mm-hmm. for sure, and and Targaryens. So just yeah. a, just interesting guy. Uh, o- overall, again, the episode was awesome. It was full of really cool things. I keep going back to King Viserys because yeah, he is. I've seen so many different emotions in the yeah. few, even though the mm-hmm. jumping around between time periods and stuff. You see him so happy at the start of this mm-hmm. with with his son and having more children yeah. and saying, "I didn't know." I didn't know. I I never dreamed this would happen. I didn't mm. think this would be the case. It's almost as if he chooses Alice and Hightower in the last episode to get everybody off his back. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to marry uh, Lena Valerian. I mean, he's like twelve. Right. It's just yeah. you know. I honestly think he would even, even though it just secures their houses and all that kind of stuff, and it's an alliance. It would have been laughed at honestly mm-hmm. around the realm. So yeah, Allison is at least a woman, and and you know. Yeah, he could start having children right away with and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So that's that's a little bit uh, better. I think they make her a little bit younger in the TV show than she is in the uh, Alice oh, okay. Hightower. I think. Is she so, supposed to be so. a little bit older than um, Rhaenyra? Rhaenyra? I think so. And you okay. guys can check me on that in the comments. Let me know. I'm just going off the top of my head here. Mm-hmm. Not in my normal setup where I've got all my references, but I think so from, from memory. Um, so, yeah, and, and anyways, you know, Allison is... Yeah, is is the choice, and he's happy. He has this. Uh, yeah. Everyone's sort of doting on Aegon the Second, his son. So, and she's pregnant with another child. Yeah, I know. Right. So, yes. Okay. Two things um, mm-hmm. about her. Just, I'm looking at a picture of her, and uh, for some reason, maybe it's just her look or her demeanor at the beginning of the show. Yeah. Um, she reminds me of Sansa a little bit. Sansa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, okay. For some reason, yeah. Just in her posture and her demeanor. And then yeah. she has a nervousness and with she's... her fingers. Have you noticed that? Okay. Like she plays Not with really, no. And, yeah, she picks her nails a lot. Okay. Um, In the last episode, they were bloody. Oh. It's a small so that's important. little detail just to see that. I, it's just oh, okay. really what it does, whether it's super significant or not. It okay. just shows you more about that character without doing anything acting wise. It's just, I mean, she's acting by playing I with her hands. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, wow. and picking her nails and they're bleeding and stuff. Wow. And there's one quick line where I think her father says, stop that. You know, knock it. Ooh, and it's okay. A tell. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, a little bit and maybe as she grows as a character mm-hmm. she stops that or mm-hmm. she starts to become more regal and there might be a time later on where and i'm just this is not like spoiler i'm just hypothetical yeah. i would imagine if you're going to yeah. try to tell a story um why would you include that yeah, yeah that's like if, an, it, if that doesn't play a role later it's going to play a role yeah. and right now it does play a role in terms of just indirect characterization yeah. you're looking at her going okay she's really nervous about yeah. this and and i i think you know it's meant to kind of make you question, was she, mm. you know, we, we see that she's sent in by her father. I was going to talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. That was my second thing. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. Did, I mean, it, you already got the, the, the dad was already, was he really like already thinking about that? That, okay, uh, if you go in there right now, you're, you know, you're beautiful. You're very empathetic. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, is he already planting the seed? I think so. Truly. I mean, right, because the one thing he does say when she goes in, she's sort of like, you know, okay, 
go say a kind word to him, etc. But the the key line was, wear one of your mother's dresses. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. True. Which is to mm-hmm. kind of again uh, present her figure and all that, all that right. stuff or whatever. So yeah, he definitely he definitely is. He is actually several steps ahead. What that mm-hmm. does is it sort of shows you that Otto was thinking the moment like the pregnancy's happening, she she's at court, she's around, she's friends with Rhaenyra. Yeah. So already there, befriending Rhaenyra could have been something even before we started watching episode one yeah. that Otto was already saying. That was probably a whisper in her ear, which is, hey, make sure you're friends uh, with Rhaenyra. Oh gosh. You know what I mean? Okay, so he's, yeah. he's that type of player. He's yeah. already started to play the Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. And he's been playing mm-hmm. it for years. Mo- he understands Damon. So this is where people okay. gotta understand like Otto Hightower is the real deal. Uh, he may not look like it, and I think he's meant sometimes to look like he's a like maybe making moves that aren't like when he mm-hmm. goes out and he faces down Damon on the yeah. You, you remember when he takes the arm yeah. there and Damon's like, I got a dragon, and yeah. it's not until Rhaenyra shows right. up that you're like, okay. Uh, yeah. So it doesn't look that smart, but mm-hmm. it also does a lot for Otto Hightower in terms of I'm going to go speak on behalf of my king. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go sort of you know just just be a representative and. Talk to him, and you know, he's he's the he's the hand of the king, so he's yeah. the second most powerful kind of you know person. Um, but he's been working to get Damon away uh, from the series for some time because he understands Damon, and mm-hmm. he understands that one, he's reckless and he could mm-hmm. cause trouble. And as Damon pointed out, he realizes that Otto Hightower has sort of got Viserys played a little bit, mm-hmm. and he sees that. Mm-hmm. So he might not actually articulate it very well, uh, or he just knows it. And he's keeping an eye on him for his brother, but yeah. he doesn't outright mock him or outright tell his brother until the very end right. of that first episode right. or whatever that, you know, this is, that, but you're yeah. getting played. Yeah. Uh, and they, they think you're a fool. Like, they essentially think you're a fool. So, uh, but Otto has been playing the Game of Thrones well before we ever even yeah. start episode one, which is cool. And they did that again through the friendship. And then you see that she goes in there and she's talking yeah. to him because later on, like the Valerians are like, okay, let's present um, Lena. Well, yeah. The game's mm-hmm. already started. Mm-hmm. He's already seen her, and she said really kind. By the way, she's super genuine, actually. When she goes in, I think yeah. Otto at least knows his daughter, and I don't think, I think she is a kind, caring, compassionate person. Yeah. I don't, her, at least what her acting is showing me is that, like, she genuinely was going in there to comfort the king. Yeah, yeah. You know, and she really is trying to to help and say a kind word, and when I lost my mother, and she's, yeah. she's really making this empathetic kind of connection. Right. So then you're like, all right. I mean, it, it, it kind of goes to, a, I think, a stage that she didn't mm-hmm. want it to go to, but her father's sort of pushing her in that direction. But at the same time, she kind of does love him at the and end. Now, and like now. Yeah. Yeah. Now, for sure. I mean, I feel like that was, we don't get to see it a lot. It's, it's the pacing of it is pushed. We have to sort of suspend right. our, I don't know, we don't get to see all those, all those intimate details Anything, or whatever. Yeah. We just see yeah. this, like, she, she builds up a few romantic nights with him or whatever or nights where she's sort of comforting him yeah and he is rushed in terms of his choice yeah uh and so Otto, again knowing that it's going to happen says well actually my daughter's right there i'm the hand Mm -hmm. and she can give you children right now and she's also someone who can who can talk to him on a level that lena or yeah others could not you know what i mean so if you have to that's your that's your choice not that he wanted to right and he truly did love you know, um, Emma Aaron, his first wife. Yeah. But now it's like they have children together and this new joy comes in. So I think th- they love one another and yeah. the, they're going to have, they at least have two, you know, one child, yeah. if not a second one on the way. Yeah. So but how heartbreaking though. I think they did a great job at showing the intimate relationship in terms of friendship that she had with Rhaenyra. Yeah. That they did. I mean, the right. first two episodes were great showing that they always hang out together. They talk about everything and that, really breaks that friendship apart yeah. because how yeah. i mean for rhaenyra it's like wow how can i live my best friend now is my father's wife crazy and her son is my brother right and now this is weird because i'm the heir but also i have a brother now yes yeah, so we should you, be I the mean, heir it's yeah. i know you've never I mean, seen the show because he, he, could, he couldn't have done it any like better in terms of we want to know what happens because it's crazy yeah well uh, <laughs> this is a bit, uh, people from the states who are listening will know what this show is it's a show called jerry springer and okay. situations like this pop up on that show from time to time when they come in and they figure out like who's the father of my child and like uh on different crazy stuff yeah. and it's, it's totally fake and made yeah. up probably but uh, crazy. <laughs> kind of feels like that a little bit uh, in terms of the relationship between he and Alice and Hightower at first. Yeah. And then it's, 
you know, a little bit more normal. Yeah. But, but let's just say it's Game of Thrones and it's not it it's not over. There's plenty more craziness to come. And you saying Otto played the Game of Thrones b- well before this. Yeah. It just shows you again, like in Game of Thrones, we see how powerful those people are who work in the background, who are the hand of the king, you know, who yeah, yeah. actually have all the strings in their right. hands and pull the strings from 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 the background more or from you know right. out of out of your sight really yeah 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 for sure and that's the thing is that you got to watch some of these secondary characters and yeah and you know while we're at it so for some of you who are um you know you're into, you're into the books i'll give you a little bit here just a kind of an easter egg something that that popped up we do see a character in this uh two new characters well several new characters mm-hmm. actually um i think it's i think it's laris clubfoot is in this and he is i believe uh i'm trying to think i'll have to look him up here but you have like how strong so you have uh lionel strong's sons yes that's who they are okay uh first is the appearance of laris who has an injured foot Mm -hmm. and it's sort of deformed and he has sort of like he he says like uh there's a hunt going on and he comes in and sits with the other ladies do you mind if i sit down yeah interesting character to keep an eye on he's named and he shows up and sits down with them so i mean you know like you're mentioning these like side characters Mm -hmm. and that's something in game of thrones it's the it's the beauty of it is who is this guy which house does he belong to and what is his role here yeah everyone's like out for themselves it's it's you're you're chasing a throne you're chasing a a, like a connection or a tie to house targaryen the dragons they have the most power so to see otto hightower there doing this now to see how strong so how strong also it's let's see it's mentioned that um uh, yeah, his other son was was uh, captain of the city watch. So once Damon sort of um, gives up that role, his other son was mentioned. So how strong is just a house to pay attention to? Right. Big time. So I want to mention it. They were Easter eggs kind of dropped in here uh, for folks. You also had the Lannister twins. Yes. Right. That was awesome. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we see those uh, two twins. Uh, Jason Lannister, I think, was uh, the twin who was asking for uh, Rhaenyra's hand in marriage I, I believe yeah. and the other one was sort of saying hey we need to go and support your brother uh Damon and Corliss are getting be- they're getting beat it yeah. does not look good we yeah. need to go do something and when we learned that the king does at the end of all this he, he will send uh he will send his army but Damon doesn't want that he wanted yeah. to win this on his own yeah so it ends up right. being this nice little like yeah I sent aid you got my message the messengers can come back and say it was delivered unless they are all dead I don't know he was beating that one guy up you know Damon yeah. was like took his helmet off and was like beating that messenger um but it's it's important yeah. because the Lannisters are kind of saying like hey we need to do something yeah and it's important and you sort of see two sides to the um to the Lannisters they're twins. One was more kind of playful in trying to get this power alliance with Rhaenyra, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, his lady wife, as he said he, yeah. she could be, and she was disgusted and not yeah. happy with that at all. Yeah. Uh, and then the other one seemed to be genuinely concerned about the realm and the state of the realm. Now, I am wondering, and I'm just even as I, I even though I've read the book, thinking, what does he really want? What is this guy really okay. after? Because yeah. he seemed more sincere. The other guy's play is pretty obvious. Yeah. He's trying to become, you know, um, through a marriage alliance, closer to House Targaryen and power. He talks about building her right. a dragon pit and everything. And yeah. So uh, very interesting. And I, I thought it was cool that they're twins, right? So yeah. you think back to our Lannister twins from the series, Jamie and Cersei. And so it was kind of cool to see right. uh, Tylen and uh, Jason Lannister there. So Yeah. But even more shocking yeah. than, um, you know, Viserys gets all these I mean he gets tons of letters because everyone is pushing him now that he named I mean Rhaenyra heir that mm-hmm. she needs to marry and everyone oh, yeah. of course everybody yes. wants to marry her. I mean Yeah. And it's- then Otto Hightower, right? He yeah. suggested that Rhaenyra should marry his little uh, her little brother Aegon to solve all the problems. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Because then it wouldn't be a question anymore. Okay, you named her heir, but now you have a son who should be heir. Well, if they get married, then both are king and queen. So, mm-hmm. so problem solved, right? Right. <laughs> that easy. Just yep. marry your, your, your 17 years younger brother. Yeah, yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, and is. so for a while, I mean, yeah, she wouldn't have to. I mean, obviously, she'd just wait for right, her to grow up or whatever, her, and, right. <laughs> and yeah, and all that. So Otto kind of says, "Yeah, just it it solves everything. You can just she can wait. She can be on her own. She doesn't have to do anything." 
uh, just she even will be sort of in charge while he is younger and coming of age. Yeah. So, yeah. And then the other the other individual who was mentioned in this. So Lord uh, Lionel Strong is the one who mentions uh, Lenor Valerion. So after Otto Hightower dips out, then it's like, OK, Lord Strong says, I think you should go with House Valerion. Yeah. So if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Lots of different marriage proposals, interesting, you know, kind of connections and stuff there in terms of who she should marry and and what what you know what to do really. Right. So, uh, it's it's Sir Harwin, Sir Harwin Strong, who King Viserys mentions. He's the one who name drops Lord Lionel's other son. So he's like, oh, you, I, I'm supposing you think that she should marry um, Harwin Strong. Mm-hmm. And he was like, you flatter me, your grace, but no, right? And he mentions someone else. Yeah. So he mentions Lainor. So there's that. And it is, he has a moment later on where he's talking to Allison in front of the tower or in front of the, uh, the, the fire. They're out on the hunt. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I never thought I'd be in this situation. I, I, I had lost sort of hope. He lost his wife. He wasn't sure. He, he yeah. named Rhaenyra because he needed an heir. Everything was so uncertain. And yeah. now did he make a mistake mm-hmm. was sort of his thought, his, his thinking. So it's it's crazy, and you know, and one of the things that they're trying to do in this whole episode is they're on the hunt and they're hunting this stag. Yes. Uh, they're in they're in the Kingswood, and they're looking for sort of a symbol, uh, the white heart. They're looking for the the white stag, which mm-hmm. actually Rhaenyra sees at the end, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, they're looking for that because that would indicate sort of if he could kill it, and if he could kill it on Aegon's name day, it's a very strong symbolic um, tie for Aegon, right? It would be like the realm would sort of be like, look, you know, we got the white stag. Yeah. Uh, this is this is how we almost like this is going to sound crazy. Shout out our little our little Shell Cottage Radio podcast here. But, you know, we did cover the Fantastic Beasts and the yeah. chillin'. People are probably like laughing and like, <laughs> talking, like are you kidding? The, the, the chillin' just came up to you. Like, what? Fantastic Beast is being mentioned? Half of, um, half of the people are like, what's a chillin'? What's a chillin'? Yeah, if you haven't seen it, I mean, it's it's how they're picking the the new wizarding leader of the of the Wizarding World Confederation or whatever right. of, of wizards. Uh, but they use this mystical creature called right. a chillin' to walk a around. Pure, and, p- yeah, yeah. A pure, yeah. Pure, exactly. Yeah. Well, uh, so that's sort of what I think the stags, you know, is, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's symbolic of that. And the fact that he doesn't get it, he does kill a stag. Uh, and then he even uses, by the way, he uses a Lannister um, lance. Oh. And you think about House Baratheon being stags, and you have Robert yes. Baratheon in... in totally right? symbolic, yes. And the Lannisters end up kind of <gasps> killing him. Uh, wow. He's also extremely drunk in this, yeah. during this hunt. <laughs> and he needs some help, like his... Uh... The guy says uh, yeah. a little bit to the left, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're off <laughs> uh, just a little bit, right? Uh, and then so what's later on is Rhaenyra is attacked by a wild boar, yeah, which is what killed Robert Baratheon. So all of these <gasps> tie, yeah, and he was too drunk during that or whatever. But it's because Cersei and everybody were filling his cup so much that he yeah uh, might stumble and make a mistake. It's dangerous on the hunt. Yeah, right. So they're actually holding the stag so he can stab it, and he's got the Lannister spear there yeah. to, to do so. So all of those were little kind of tie-ins mm-hmm. and little Easter eggs that kind of take you back to the main series. And I thought that was really cool. I thought it was really cool to kind of see that. And for people who, it's just rewarding, all right? As, as, as you're watching, you're like, I, that is rewarding in yeah. terms of like yeah. making those connections back there. So, yeah. Yeah. And then the music when Rhaenyra comes back to the camp, I'm like, whoa, let's yeah. go. I know. And I, know. I really expected her to have the white stack killed in her i don't know yeah dragging, just tossed over dragging her shoulder it. yeah something dragging. like that i got it yeah no no she let it go yeah she let it go and i mean that says something to her as well um just super interesting now another thing i don't want to miss this too so we're right at that time in the episode mm-hmm. sir Kristen cole is there with her mm-hmm. he's just out he's been remember the king's guard mm-hmm. he's just out there with her she picked him i owe you you picked me this is yeah. the highest honor for anyone from house yeah. cole so you see their bond and relationship yeah. starting to kind of form which is which is pretty cool what do you think about that i want to get your thoughts because i'll just say it's super important it's super significant do you like it do you trust him do you think he's a cool guy uh what do you think well if you ask me if you ask it like that, now what? I feel like I shouldn't trust him because we no, do. No, isn't that what you ask? <laughs> don't you in every game, in every character in Game of Thrones or House well, of Dragons, don't you ask, do I trust that guy? No, I'm oh just my kidding. Gosh, You're right. I don't know. Like, uh, yeah, You're if right. he, he, probably... he seems like 
a guy you would trust and who's he honest does. and yes he's a, he's a member of the king's guard yeah an honorable guy and she definitely does she definitely likes she definitely him does. yeah who knows if romantically or not right because he's we see them together for a whole night i mean they're just chilling out by the fire talking yeah. and then later on her father says you do you, you pick your own you know person your your husband later. yes yes he gets and it's kind permission. of like there is a connection between they spend the whole episode together and then he says you can pick yeah and yeah. you feel but, you feel like okay this is a person she bonds with so yeah. but the thing is though is that like she, he's a member of the king's guard and so therefore oh yeah it's definitely not a, yeah he can't do it right <laughs> he can't uh no he's unable to sort of be but uh, that's where the drama is that's where the drama's <laughs> at you know what i mean so there, there's something there i think everybody's kind of sniffing on that a little bit and mm-hmm. thinking yeah something's up there uh so that's pretty cool yeah. but yeah i think you know he he even has a pretty honest viserys we're gonna jump to viserys mm-hmm. real quick here mm-hmm. has a pretty honest conversation with allison when he's talking oh, yeah. to her just about like yeah. what should be done and, and all these different mm-hmm. things and then talking about rhaenyra and then she's still even trying to kind of heal what has yeah. happened and then in the beginning when they're under the white like the the weirwood tree with the face yeah and the musicians yeah. there i almost missed this but um there's a great nymeria reference for folks who are looking for you know who was that song about mm-hmm. um nymeria basically took her people to dorn it's like a super old story and there's rumors that there might be like a nymeria uh show or the Ten Thousand ships uh show okay. that might come out so yeah more stuff for, for westeros but like she is there and she says rhaenyra this doesn't have to be this way mm. <laughs> what yeah yeah i know she says that and i thought mm. oh yeah i know yeah right okay yeah like uh, uh yeah you're kind well, of well it's still kind of weird having my father's children yeah um <laughs> So anyway, <laughs> just a little crazy. But yeah, he has a good conversation with yeah, her. And yeah. she and I actually, I'm going to say this. This is going to sound crazy. I like Allison. Me too. Actually, I, th- I was going to say that. Yeah, I like her and I don't like her. Like she's doing what her father yeah. tells her to do. Yeah. You know, and yeah. she's sort of like growing up and growing into this role. And mm-hmm. she's just doing this for House yeah. Hightower. And it's sort of, I think it definitely hurts her a little bit that like yeah. she was so close with Rhaenyra first. Yeah. And this is, you can never really predict how this is going to go. Yeah. Right? You, uh, it, like when you play the Game of Thrones, you often have to react to different mm-hmm. things. You know, Lionel Strong in this is also reacting. He mm-hmm. said originally, I think it's a good play for House Valerian. I think you should sort of go that direction. Yeah. He's on the, the King's Council and could be up for a promotion, could get promoted mm-hmm. to a different seat of power inside that very council. Uh, and he, he would get a vote, like Corliss Valerian is on that council. So they're talking, saying, hey, why don't you recommend you know, my house and I'll, I'll kind of, you know, as I get grow in power, I could sort of bring you with me. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Those yeah. type of alliances are always, always happening. And so Otto is also like on the fly trying to help out and trying to figure out like what to do for his house. So I like yeah. Allison and just wanted to kind mm-hmm. of, you know, mention that. Yeah, she's that. smart. She's empathetic. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, so really, really cool scene between, uh, we're getting close to the end here, mm-hmm. Viserys and Rhaenyra. At the yeah. end, when he just like you said it earlier, which is like you can choose. Yeah, I I I, I like pick someone who's yeah. going to make you happy, and he does say as he's walking away from her, I did doubt. I had a moment of weakness where mm-hmm. I I wavered yeah. for a moment because I had a son, but yeah. I I he he reaffirmed to her. Yeah, that's over. Right, I I never actually I he, to, even to say that he wavered. Right, no, it was sort I, of like I feel his struggle. It's yeah. so good. You can feel he's honestly, he has his the best interest in mind for his daughter and his now wife her. and son. Yeah, he's so torn. Right, right, he and it's very her. honest what he says in the end. Like, I I think too a part of him yeah. knows what every because she says well you know, um, Jason Lannister knows that um, you're you're gonna pass me over. Uh, Queen Rainey said this, or I mean, you know, Rainey's the queen who never was, said this as well to her. They're going to mm-hmm. pass you over. This is mm-hmm. not going to work. Yeah. He can say that, but they're going to find someone else. There'll be another council. They're going to pick another man. That's just not going to happen. Yeah. So, and he loves his daughter and he mm-hmm. knows how smart she is and what she can do, how yeah. determined, all that kind of stuff. And he wants, he passes that. He trusts her with this secret. She is a dragon rider, by the way. Yeah. Super powerful. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I just, it's interesting that he is... He has that that conversation, reaffirms to her, and her acting is so good. Oh, His yeah. acting is so good. Yeah. The acting all around in this, I have to say, is really, really good. Yep. I've not really seen anybody who I've been like, ah, it's a little weak. I, there was actually some people who were saying, um, there's a character later on, uh, 
Lenor Valerion, the guy, mm-hmm. there's a dragon rider, and everyone's like, who's that other dragon rider who was... Oh, the one who comes and saves... Uh, Damon. Damon, yeah, yeah. right, because Damon kind of does, they set up something where he comes out, and he's the bait, he's drawing out yeah. the crab feeder, all that, so which is an epic scene we're going to get to here in yes. just a second. <laughs> um, but some people were saying, like, oh, he seemed kind of, he, he fell kind of flat, and they were thinking that they weren't so sure about his acting or whether they liked him or not. I think you've only heard two lines from him, and we have no idea. We haven't even seen nothing. his face yeah. that much. I know. So I read some stuff online, just, you know, Twitter, you know Twitter is, it's just random people people saying what they're saying and so yeah it's crazy uh, right um yeah people just blast off on twitter and there's whatever you know? uh <laughs> i do it too and it's 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 fun but it is you go out there and you can find people getting on the thread and you're like wow what, what why with the whole, whole lane or Valer- i thought it's fine it's cool to see another dragon rider yeah and uh i think we'll get more in him and i think people will be impressed with him as mm-hmm. well because they just they have a standard you can tell mm-hmm. that we're gonna redo it until it's good and yeah. their auditioning process is probably really yeah. you know rigorous and and stuff like that so everyone is just is is killing it uh which is awesome you really can't have a drop i mean because it was so good in game of thrones it would be very noticeable if there was a drop off oh, yeah. here you know yeah. and there's not it's actually it's it's exceeding it and in, in a lot of it which is impressive it's very hard to do yeah very hard to do so okay they have their conversation then back to the battle we get the mm-hmm. i mean it's viserys seems to be settled he has a piece which is I'm going to get behind my daughter. I'm going to I'm going to kind of um, mm-hmm. support her, continue to support her in her yeah. claim for the throne. She is my heir and I'm going to help my brother because truly and everyone's like, well, you're not the king's not wrapped up in this. Damon did this on his own. Yeah. But Damon is his brother. And, yeah. and you're sort of like that's your flesh and blood. And he's out there causing war. Whether people think it or not, they're going to think, OK, this is something that is it, this is a Westerosi war. This is essentially. Yeah. I mean, you, you've got two members of his of his small council leading this war. I mean, Damon's a former member, but still, like, they're right. out there leading this war. So it's like, okay, we can't lose it. It looks bad. Uh, mm-hmm. People are being kidnapped yeah. and stuff like that. So they so they go out and they're going to send aid. But Damon's like, no, I did all this. I've been out here for three years. I will win this on my own. I'm not. So they, he does the most risky. Wow, he's been there crazy. for three years. I missed. I, yeah. well, it feels like, you know. We only see like two or three scenes before, yeah, the big his big scene, and mm-hmm. I totally missed that it's been three years. Three years, because in the beginning he says, "What's three more days?" Wow, he he's, he's he's doing the hunt, and he's like, "What's three more days?" I'll just, it's been three years. I'll wait. Wow. Um, but they're like, "No, every day counts." Like like the yeah, you know, sending him three days earlier might have been different, but he waits a little bit, and then Damon it forces them to kind of go in here and do yeah. something pretty drastic. Yeah. Uh, which is awesome. So we can talk about that. I know it's a little mm-hmm. bit gruesome. Wasn't that the gruesome part was at the beginning with the crab feeder. Right. At the end, I feel like you could you could watch. A oh lot yeah, of yeah, that. totally. Just, I didn't. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's from afar, and you're really just seeing uh, Damon out there getting you know taking arrows. He took a few shots. Mm-hmm. He's out there waving the 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 white flag. Yeah, bringing them very out. Very cunning. Very. Yeah. You let's win this for a at second. All cost. For a second, if you don't know him very well, even though we have seen him and what he's capable of, but for a second, you're like. What's he up to? Is he going to go to him and team up with him or something now? Yeah, Because he's really... mad at his brother or, you know. So you didn't they're... know. So going into that, you had no idea what he was going to do, right? And then... I always forget that. So you were thinking maybe yeah. he could have gone, it's either go out there and, and be bait or maybe he does something like, I want Completely different, like, yeah. Like truce in terms of like the crab feeder comes yeah. out and hey, I want to make an alliance with yeah. you. Wow. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then once it becomes clear that it's not, that's not the case, he's going to... He just totally uh, faked that whole. Oh yeah, uh, he's just bringing him white out. flag thing. Right. Um, Which is super I, devious. Yeah. By the way. Oh yeah, it's yeah. Like yeah. The, one of those things that's like super. It's dishonorable. Dishonorable, yeah. To do. Yeah. And he still you, is like, yeah. I don't care. No, yeah, he's Winning gonna. This war. I, yeah, I gotta win this at all costs. Yeah. But at the same time, he's not someone who who's afraid of getting his hands dirty. Not at all. Because I was expecting. Okay, once I saw uh, he's he's going for the kill. Yeah. He wants this war to be over. I thought he was just going to run out there and then his dragon comes. And, you know, I thought his dragon, because I think um, in the trailer for the episode, I saw something, you know, where they burn, the, the dragon burns all these people. Oh, yeah, and yeah, I yeah, thought yeah. it was just his dragon coming for his rescue. And he's like, oh, I'm this powerful Targaryen. I just pull mm-hmm. my dragon out. No, yeah. he went there not knowing that anyone really, right, right? He didn't know that anyone was going to come. 
Yeah. I Wait, think. Damon? Yeah. No, he, he thought, I, I'm just going to do this on my own. Yeah. Well, I don't care. So you think that's what happened? I'm that just he, asking. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think we're meant to, and that's okay. See, that's good. So like, I'm glad you said that. Because okay. Because I think it's it's more, and you've only seen it once, right? You've only watched yeah. it one time. Yeah. yeah. Just, just recently. So we were like, again, traveling on a plane, oh, yeah. coming back from a wedding. <laughs> uh, a bit crazy. So I think they mentioned it earlier. We would need like bait they have like some like the, the, we would need to bait them out so that happened early in the episode and it happens real fast and they're yeah. talking about what would need to happen to get them out of the caves mm -hmm. so what we don't see is they have another speaking role like damon he does speak and he says this is mm -hmm. what i'm gonna do he tells them what yeah. he's gonna do but okay. we have to infer that yeah. they don't really tell us that's yeah. what happened we just based upon the conversation prior to mm -hmm. him going out there we saw him talking to corliss valerian and all these guys because they're staged and set up and ready to fight yeah okay so yeah and and they, and they had a dragon rider ready to go yeah. to torch everything so okay i guess so yeah. but he was still ready to die oh yeah because he, i mean you're he, almost like there's so many arrows flying he's it's just war. running out yeah. there he should have been hit like a million yeah. times. No, he he one hundred percent was what was ready to go, and I think it was sort of like I would rather die, risk mm -hmm. death, than to have to say, yeah, my big brother came and saved me. Yeah, you know that's what he did not want that at all. Yeah, and that's what he and Corliss are kind of talking about being second sons and saying, nah, yeah. uh, we we're not we're not having this. Um, we're gonna do this on mm -hmm. our own. That's mm -hmm. how we are. That's how we roll. Yeah, and he wins a lot of respect that way. It's super risky. Uh, mm -hmm. And you can tell he's a character willing to do that. Yeah. Definitely willing yeah. to do that. So whereas like Viserys is more measured and more calm and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, weights or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I, th I think some people, I don't know, like Viserys to, to me is still very, uh, like a really good king and I think still makes good decisions. Yeah. He's made out to be kind of a fool, but yeah. I, I largely think he's doing a, a, a fairly decent job. Yeah um he's, he's he's emotional he's also yeah. tied up in you know wanting to caring about his line securing you know um heirs and all that kind of stuff which is super right. important it's just a different thing it's just a different it's uh, also aspect. we have to remember it's been peaceful for most of his reign right mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. they're this is the first time they really have to deal with war war situation here and yeah that's why he's almost like it, we get as a viewer get frustrated yeah. by his reaction you know his um counselors or what do you call them like yeah yeah the small they, counsel com kinda... they come in all the mm -hmm. time and say hey there is this really really bad situation. bad situation and we need to do something about it right right and he's like and eh, not now <laughs> right it's not a good not not a good time not a good time for me yeah 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 for sure so uh, a couple more easter eggs i guess so at the end super epic i mean obviously mm -hmm. damon mm -hmm. wins he drags the crap feeder out there it was yeah. crazy goes in and kills him and yeah. they they win and he's got all this respect i mean looks, yeah he looks epic there at the end he looks yeah. like actually pretty 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 awesome so uh, a couple more things that were mentioned just in this episode uh let's see rhaenyra is called the realm's delight so that's something from mm -hmm. the fr from the book true yeah uh which is cool and she is she's the realm's delight mm -hmm. so that was neat to kind of see mm -hmm. her mentioned uh in that way we already mentioned the boar attack uh with uh, robert baratheon and then um mm -hmm. king viserys does recall his targaryen uh, like dreamers he recalls yeah. the mm -hmm. fact that like Danny's the dreamer led them out of Valeria others have dreamed Aegon the Conqueror has had his dream which is like a like a prophetic dream about the White Walkers what will happen later on with Jon Snow and yeah. the whole end of A Song of Ice and Fire um, he also then had his own dream about a child born to him you know and he couldn't see he kept thinking that dream was never going to come yeah. true he couldn't see yeah. it happening and it happens kind of air quote happens in such a way that it, it's uh it, is it really what he dreamed or did he dream something else i think we're still questioning mm -hmm. that so just interesting to to mention that they have the these dreams and that they can yeah. sort of see into the future because what we had in a song of us and fire was melisandra who could see into her flames oh, yeah. mm -hmm. right we had the, the we had relore we had other powers we had the house of the undying we had yeah. um d you know, different situations where you could be told a uh, like a prophecy or, or right. see the future and so to have that like how, how are you going to do that here well you still could have relore you still could have the dragons are around there's still magic mm -hmm. there's still power but the targaryens definitely have their dragon dreams yeah so kind of interesting something something to keep an eye on there but um, um yeah. quick question that's mm -hmm. a little bit off topic in uh, the game of thrones series 
they mention a lot like the old gods and the new gods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that play a role here in this? It's like 200 years before. So yeah. is this where do they still believe in the old gods or is... Yeah. So that's a good question. They mm -hmm. have um like the over in... So there's the faith. There's the the seven, the mm -hmm. seven gods. Those are like the, like the new gods, sort of the they mm -hmm. often worship. If you worship the seven, you're normally from the south. The mm -hmm. old gods okay. typically were gods of like the you know spirits of the river and and more earth, yeah okay like yeah. Or oriented sort of yeah. uh, nature uh, gods and they were more like you look at the werewoods yeah and you would have a god's wood where the werewood was at and you could pray to the old gods yeah praying to a tree right that's right? where they always went to that tree yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. okay remember so that. the mm -hmm. god's woods were there there's there's this i mean the lore on that is that there was a treaty uh back in the day between the children of the forest and there was you know they were cutting down these different sacred trees mm -hmm. and so a lot of different keeps have i mean the lore is that they have some protection there's some mm -hmm. magic there because they kept a god's wood they kept a weirwood tree yeah. there yeah now what's interesting about all of that is that you have later on in the series you have bran and blood raven and others who can tap into a weirwood network and they can see through those trees like they are tapped in oh, to okay right think about yeah. that so bran could go back yeah, in time true and he could witness all these different events so he actually had access to see rhaenyra right there being mm -hmm. uh, you know listening to nymeria's song and this conversation between her and Allison. There's several times where she's been there with Allison Hightower. So the old gods, yeah, right? Yeah. The old gods are sort of, they're more so um, worshiped in the north mm -hmm. and up by the mm -hmm. wall and the Starks mm -hmm. and so on. But like, so Catelyn, uh, Catelyn Tully, her family worshiped the seven. So she would pray okay. to the seven, to the mother, to the stranger, to the crone, yeah. you know, and so she would pray to them. And Sansa uh, liked the song. She liked the story. She liked the tales. Yeah. Um, but then so, some of the other Starks would pray to the old gods. And yeah. sometimes they would pray to the old gods and the new gods, because why not just be covered right. across the board? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and then when you, then you go to Essos and there's all sorts of, the Relor is is a god, yeah. right? I mean, so that's, that's, you know, the one god. And then there's the god of death, right? Right. Um, Okay. That the, so there's lots of different sort of ones. But yeah, there definitely is. The biggest thing with the Targaryens, a little history here, is that originally they weren't accepted because they do marry brother and sister. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, they, they marry in and among their, their, their family. Which is forbidden. Uh, which is not according necessarily to good. The, I think they would yeah. have let that go. But then Aegon the Conqueror married twice. He married at the same time. He had oh. two sister wives at the same time for the most for most of his life and that was heavily frowned upon yeah that was a, a sin if you will yeah and the seven sort of were like yeah you can't do that and then he mm -hmm. was like what are you gonna do about it <laughs> and they're like nothing go right ahead he's like watch me we'll maybe change things but secretly they don't like it it doesn't yeah. fit in their yeah. tenets it's not necessarily um something mm -hmm. but they're the most powerful and yeah. so they're sort of like what they have dragons do? They have dragons, yeah. So they do. They have the gods wood there, but they, at the same time, they also uh, a lot of them worship the seven and pray to the seven and whatever. And the Targaryens really just sort of roll with. Uh, I mean, they're they're sort of like we don't really care. I mean, mm -hmm. they they just they have dragons. So yep, we we can play along with the whole seven thing if you want us mm -hmm. to or whatever. I mean, they, I mean, just kind of it's on an individual basis. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, good question though. Hmm. That's a good question. Anything else? If you have any other questions, just you know, kind of spit them out here. I'll, I'll go through some oh. Easter eggs. But if you think of something, just just kind of tell me, okay? Okay, I will. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, we mentioned when the Lannisters showed up, we also had this drop for Casterly Rock. The the wall was mentioned. The Sunset Sea was mentioned. Casterly Rock was mentioned. Uh, it was actually said that Casterly Rock was so high that you could literally see the wall, which is actually what they say of the High Tower in Old Town. So Otto High Tower and his family have a High Tower. Um, oh yeah right <laughs> so yeah makes sense they uh they they rule that area and it's yeah. in old town where the maesters are from all the like the old citadel wow you think of it as like a scientific sort of like academy yeah and and they they're learning about those things and so they're less into the mystic arts right like melisandre mm -hmm. and others right. would be or or in, into the religions they understand the faith mm -hmm. um but they have they, a more scientific approach yeah 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 for sure so um yeah but that's where they're from, and that's why you sort of see, you might see the Otto Hightower is close to some of the maesters because his group sort of, they are proximity-wise very mm -hmm. close to one another. Mm -hmm. um, even though you have maesters come in from all over the kingdoms, like you have them, yeah. they, they give up their name. You never really know with a maester. They, they give up their last name, and we forget who they are or who okay. they were before. And do those family alliances still matter? They're not yeah. supposed to. But they do. Yeah. You remember the the, uh, the blind man who is up at the wall 
Amon, Maester Amon, is there. He's super mm. old. Oh, yes, and he ends yes, up dying. yes. He, he was, was a Targaryen. He was a Targaryen. Yeah. yeah. And so in the end, <laughs> he's sort of like, I almost almost wishing he could have done more. Should he have done yeah. more? Yeah. And so, yeah, the, the Maesters are a whole other element, I think, to mm-hmm. watch in this series. And I think yeah, we haven't, they have a big role. We haven't seen them a lot. No. In no. this uh, show, at least. Yeah. Not yet. So, uh, okay, that's pretty cool. I'm trying to think if there's some, there's, I'm sure there was plenty of other things uh, that were really interesting and you know yeah i just i mentioned earlier that i really enjoy watching that little um recap and they talk about the episode the producers and act, some of the actors and their characters and stuff and i thought it was cool that they they kind of gave you that hint this episode was about growing up leaving your childhood behind right and right um all the characters that were kind of kids before this episode like three years past you said or four Mm -hmm. yeah three three years Mm -hmm. um that they're now they had to go through a struggle and then they were kind of reborn at the end of the episode with a new perspective on who they are that's what they said yeah so that's what that was like looking back now it totally makes sense and that yeah they all had their so um rhaenyra yeah she ran away Mm -hmm. yeah she um kind of spend the night with what's his name uh sir chris and cole cole yeah, cole, yeah. chris and cole mm-hmm. um and she was attacked she they had to talk about it her problems and she had to talk her, to her dad and then she walks out there with a little you can see like a you know a little smile on her oh, face yeah. almost yeah. like okay this is better than i thought yes. i can at least choose and my my dad's not gonna and, and push he, me and he still has my back and he's still kind right of, you know, yeah behind me and supporting me for the throne yeah. Yes, and Where then she didn't think he was, and then Damon obviously he was reborn because he almost died and mm-hmm. he succeeded in uh, yeah. killing the crab feeder, and probably also has now he gained some respect. He did something that you know. Oh yeah, he's yeah. not just the king's brother anymore. No, he's now the one who Seasoned. ended the war and or you know, yeah. for now ended the war and. Uh, killed the crab feeder well, on his own. So really, what you're talking about is, is like there's there's a birth. We're celebrating the the name day of Aegon the Second. And oh, that's right. We yeah. also have like True. this this sort of rebirth in these characters. Yeah. Right. So we have this new life. We're celebrating a name day. Yeah. But they themselves are all sort of you know kind of getting revitalized. Uh, yeah. Essentially, this was this episode was was about that. Even King Viserys himself. Yes. Uh, is starting to kind of feel that again. Uh, and, and and comes out of a stupor and says, "Yes, send aid to my brother. Also, let me reassure yeah. my daughter." Uh, let's look forward the whole yeah. thing and you start to feel like okay we didn't really see him we didn't see we saw him drunk but yeah. that was just him dealing with a lot of the things that were going on and then he gets mm-hmm. through that but like you said the, all the characters seem to be in a really good position in place at the end of the episode yeah yeah, yeah. even allison like, well, okay they're, yeah. they're back yeah they're, yeah they're all primed i guess so, right yeah even allison for me she's definitely grown up and she, i mean she has kids now and she's confident to give the king advice and he seeks her advice. That's true. Which is that's true. pretty significant, I think. You trust her. Yeah. Yeah. And she has children. I mean, that's the thing. They have children together. Yeah. And if, yeah, I think people forget that sometimes. It's like, those are his children. Yeah. So yeah. he loves Rhaenyra, but yeah. he also has other children. Yeah. Those are her siblings. Yeah. And you're like, wow, what's up? I mean, those are like literally your flesh and blood yeah. uh, siblings. They're not step or anything. Oh, they're, they're half. Yeah. Half siblings. So uh just just kind of crazy but um wanted to mention one more time before we kind of wrap this up just that the the white heart at the very end the stag right that shows Mm -hmm. up it is a it's considered a magical creature essentially in in a song of ice and fire it's it's super symbolic and stuff so it also i forgot this it was the name of joffrey's ship during in, in the royal fleet it was destroyed by wildfire um so that's that's the connection to the series uh song of ice and fire okay um and yeah, so just a bit of interesting, maybe foreshadowing in, so, in some of that, just the fact that it's, one, looking at Rhaenyra, she lets it go, and uh, just really cool that it's there. So take that yeah. for what you will. I thought it was amazing that we saw it. Didn't expect it. It reminds me of Narnia. Sorry. <laughs> Narnia? <laughs> Aren't yeah. they hunting for a white stag at the end when they oh, are I'm not adult? Really okay, it. never mind. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Probably. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, you would. You would but know. I think... Like a white stag is in general like a mystical creature in in um, mythology. Yeah. Who stands for something bigger, yeah. something 
For sure. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, so it's just cool to see it, and I think uh, you mm-hmm. know, folks were excited to kind of see that. But all right, anyways, yeah, hey, that's pretty much we've got a. We, this was a uh, an extra episode just on top of um, this is our part two to episode three Matt and I had our eight minute reaction you heard the energy you felt that hopefully and then this is just us kind of talking about it breaking it down uh, getting uh, Lottie's thoughts on it all right I wanted to bring you on here and and get your thoughts so congratulations by the way again to the newlyweds yeah congrats (laughs) they're in Hawaii on their honeymoon right now so uh, hopefully they're doing doing well and having having a great time out there like I said we'll be back on Sunday um, I'll probably try to have the, the watch party back up again. Matt will be calling in by phone and I'll have oh. that kind of, you know, uh, sort of set up to where you guys can hear him. You can hear me. You can see me and we'll be in for the watch party. I think Sir Jimmy will be uh, back on as well. I'm not really sure how that's going to work because we are going to have Matt on the phone. So I got to talk cool. to him about that. That'll be interesting. I just set this whole phone thing up, by the way, for my podcast, an unexpected podcast talking about rings of power. So if you guys want to, you know, talk about rings of power and, uh, just sort of hear a different perspective on that. My good buddy Lane and I are talking about it. We did a Hobbit hotline where in which we took phone calls. We had like 15 people call in. That was crazy. So I've been trying to figure out the technology on that whole uh, phone call system and getting it out to StreamYard and everything. So be looking for that. Again, Shell Cottage Radio, our, our podcast where we talk about Harry Potter, the Wizarding World, and who knows what else, Doubt and Abby, Star Wars. <laughs> I mean, who, who knows? It's kind of our family podcast there. And Lottie is there. Now, you're also going to be over on another podcast here, Oh, this yeah, on Sunday, Sunday. Yeah. right? So that is the Lord of the Rings watch party or mm-hmm. watch party Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And I'll put a link to that as well. So you're going to be talking about the Rings of Power. I'm excited. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so yeah, you've watched it a couple of times. You're going to be talking about episode three. Mm-hmm. You're on the newbie panel, meaning right. like you're a newbie. You don't really, you don't really know a lot about the Tolkien lore. No, yeah, not that much. Yeah, no, not that much. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, that's cool. I think it's great. I think it's fun because people want that perspective. And I even here today didn't even think about it before we started. It's really cool to hear your perspective Mm -hmm. on some of these things. Like, what are you thinking Mm -hmm. about where this is going? Because you haven't read any of it. I haven't even really talked too much about it (laughs) because I watch it and pop on here and talk to Matt. And then I'm exhausted. We're dead tired by the end of it uh, on a Sunday night. And I'm just like diving in bed, done, (laughs) back up for Monday, hit the grind. So uh, it's actually good to sit down and hear your thoughts on it because uh, we haven't had a chance to really. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. And uh, just a quick shout out, by the way, uh, we got to meet uh, Jimmy and Kelsey this weekend. So we that was did. super cool to meet them in person. Yes. And yes. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, so so uh, friends, uh, Sir Jimmy has been been on here. You guys know him. Um, met Matt and I through this podcasting project, and it was great. And so he was. We get to meet him in Portland. Uh, his his channel, the Fantasy Network, is over there. I put a link for that as well. I think we've been putting links down in the episodes that he's been on. Uh, check him out on YouTube. He's doing some breakdowns and sort of some you know book to show comparison yeah. stuff or whatever, uh, which is which is really cool. So uh, also Matt and I will be covering I think Rings of Power on. I think so. I think we're going to try to do this on Sundays, drop it on Mondays. We're going to be talking about this on Heroes of the Horn. So if you want some of that, we might even be doing a little comparison episode here on Bend the Knee if you guys are following that series. Huge series and having a lot of fun. Uh, again, breaking that down across different channels. So it just it's really cool. To, I think it's a great time to be a fantasy nerd because yes. you've got all this stuff going on. <laughs> and then I'm going to be an overload in like two weeks when Andor hits and I'm like, covering star wars and andor so the only thing that's missing is a harry potter show i so. know right <laughs> please 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 <laughs> come on we want that we want that so bad so yeah uh just crazy but all right friends well hey uh you can follow uh you can follow us actually together at fleur and bill uh we have we have sort of our instagram there where we uh, update mm-hmm. stuff on the on the podcast as you guys know here you can follow me at womper underscore 2m and you can follow lottie's personal account at charlotte sue if you'd like as well so <laughs> yeah come follow us come check us out come engage what did you like about this episode send us a message and by the way if we uh, catch some of those we'll, we'll weave them into the next uh, few episodes and who knows maybe at the end i'll have me you and matt and maybe even lady Teresa back on just to kind of yeah. talk about like, what do we think you know maybe <laughs> jimmy and 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 kelsey we'll see it'd be kind of fun to sit down and talk about this at the end in terms of like what was this like what was this whole yeah. experience this whole fall sort of well, like I think because that would be so much fantasy stuff that would be on. a blast yeah yeah so all right friends well hey uh thanks so much uh please like please subscribe all that good stuff if you want to send us a raven be sure to send that to btkcast at gmail.com uh we probably will at some point we've been super busy these first couple weeks but we probably will take some ravens we got a bunch of them already in here uh your guys's thoughts so keep sending those in we might drop an episode on a friday next week or something I'm, I'm just kind of throwing this out there just to get your thoughts. I think people enjoy doing that. So just know that if you are writing into us, uh, it's being read and we hope to read it on the show. So feel free to send that into btkcast at gmail.com. Friends, we will see you guys next time. And always remember, fire and blood.